Hey everyone, welcome to another MLM dumpster fire. Today we're back for yet another top MLM fails video and this time we have two videos again. Unfortunately, today we're back to watch another video from iGenius, this is Megan, and I say unfortunately for myself because she seems to just trigger me most of the times that I react to her stuff, but I saw a few good videos on her YouTube channel and I really wanted to react to them with you guys. So that's what we're doing today and there's also a clip from Eric, which is called, what does failure smell like so i just thought that's probably gonna be an interesting one to watch together don't forget to click the like and subscribe button that's a nice free way to support my channel if you would like and as always big shout out to all my channel members thank you guys for being here and let's just get into this what's going on guys long time no talk for those of you who are new to my channel my name is megan savage i am a 26 year old digital entrepreneur and i come on here and i pour value into guys and tell you about my life uh it has been a quick minute i'm sorry i have been off digital entrepreneur always gets me but also why do they have to say i pour value into like that is such a weird way to say that. Traveling and going to events. Uh, currently, uh, this year, I went to the UK. First off, beautiful, absolutely beautiful architecture. I love the food. I love the people. The air smells nicer. I definitely want to go again. Um, I also got to see Big Ben, so go check out my Instagram if you want to see those pictures. Besides that, right after, I went to Chicago for another event. And surprisingly, I actually loved it as well. I got to see the bean, but it literally had a fence around it. I have no idea why. I got those pictures too, don't worry. And I got to try deep dish pizza for the very first time. Guys, if you know me at all, you know I'm a huge foodie, so <laughs> I was in heaven. But besides the point, with my travels, I actually meet a lot of people. Um, I love to network. If you guys see me ever on the streets, whether it's in Toronto or you know I'm off traveling and I, and I come to your hometown, definitely come say hi, okay? I love meeting new people. I love getting to know you guys. And you know, just have a quick conversation, maybe take a pic, something, you know? A very common conversation that I have when I meet. The only reason why she's saying this is because she's gonna try to recruit you into her MLM, which is iGenius, a trading and investing MLM. That's the only reason. And I've, I have heard Kelsey say this before from Prove It, Kelsey Ray. She says the same thing. If you ever see me on the street, please come up, say hi. I'm going to get your phone number. But it's exactly what they're doing. Of course, they want to meet as many people as they can and use their social media to meet even more people because it's more prospects that they can recruit into their MLM. And they get more and more money the more they grow their team. People is, Megan, oh my gosh, like I've always wanted to be an entrepreneur. I always wanted to work online. But... I just don't know if it's meant for me. I don't know if I'll be any good at it. Let me tell you what. First off, it's very normal to have that fear when trying anything new, especially something that's out of your forte. I thought I'd make it a little bit easier for you guys. I'm gonna go over five characteristics of someone who might be an entrepreneur. I have worked with people literally all over the globe, and these five characteristics are something that I notice in every single one of them, whether their age is different, their background is different, or they're from the States, Europe, wherever. So if you're someone that's always wanted to get into entrepreneurship, or you know somebody that has been thinking about it but just hasn't taken that first step yet, get them to watch this video. Characteristic number one, they know they're meant for more. I have heard this from almost every single entrepreneur that I've ever met. I actually was just in December in Vegas for a huge convention where I was talking to people that were six, seven, and eight figure earners in the industry. And every single one of them, when they talked about their story, was talking about how they knew that they were meant for more than just an- One thing that I don't like when they say this, I was meant for more, it kind of shits on everyone who is living an average average life what you would call but like what is average like having kids is really hard but somehow we think that having kids and working a nine to five is the average average joe life but like having kids and raising kids is really really difficult to me that's how i see it anyway but i don't like the fact that she is implying like you're meant for more as if if you're doing anything that's not entrepreneurship or if you're not super rich you're just you're not doing enough and you're just not good enough or whatnot like i just don't like that attitude average life some people could describe it based on their stories and their backgrounds and the trauma they may have went through other people just didn't really understand they had this feeling deep down that they were going to do big things with this life me for example i always talked about that even from when i was a young child that like as young as i can remember i always knew that this life had something more to offer me and i had something more to offer it it was this feeling in my gut that i was going to impact a lot of people and that i needed to prepare myself i couldn't really describe it but now looking back I usually kids dream about going to space or being like a superstar or a singer or whatnot like that's okay that's fine if you had big dreams and you wanted to impact people whatever from young age but come on like you're a scammer in my opinion in an mlm 
like the majority of people in your downline that you're recruiting are not making any profit, but you're getting profit off of their hard work and their effort. You're just scamming those people out of money for your own personal financial benefits. So how are you impacting anyone but yourself? That's just my opinion on that, Megan. I could sort of see how the traumas in my life, the obstacles and the things that I went through, how it lined me up and the stars aligned to put me in this exact same spot to meet the people that I did, to have the life that I do now. And I know that it's just the beginning. Number two, you're probably the oddball. You didn't really fit in as a kid. Something society does from the moment we get into school. First off, I'm just going to touch on that a little bit. School is there to teach you how to be an employee. They teach you how to be another cog in the system. I'm not saying education is bad. First off, I'm going to touch on that point, but I absolutely love education. I love to learn new things, but I don't know about you guys, but I've never had to know like the circumference of a pie. Like I've never had it. <laughs> I've never had to actually use most of the things that I've used in school. Now that's for a whole other video, but I want you to keep that in mind. That's just one of the many examples that what society does the moment that we are old enough to think at all is they start pre, -pre I was laughing because she said school teaches you how to be an employee. Sure. Okay. Fair enough. But what are you in an MLM though? You're an independent contractor. You can get terminated. It's not your own business. You're not your own boss and you're not even profiting. You're working for free. So at least at least school teaches you how to be an employee in a nine to five or whatever else where you get regular paychecks and you can pay your bills and stuff. They also teach about permit schemes and Ponzi schemes and stuff. So programming us to think a certain way. So we'll be a certain way when we're older. So maybe you were that kid that you were like, Hey, this just doesn't make sense. Maybe you were more of a visionary as a child. You had really, really big goals and most of the kids didn't really understand. If you've ever been told to be realistic when you're talking about your goals, you're probably in this category and this can carry on from childhood to, to you know teenage years to maybe even young adult years maybe while other kids were more interested in partying and hooking up you were more interested in learning a high income skill or traveling the world or how to build a business whatever it is you just didn't fill the puzzle piece that the society has put you in number three and this one could be an obvious one a job a nine to five job just does not sit right with you i want to say this for what it is i talk a lot on my page about hating the nine to five world and here's the thing i am not talking to the people who who want to be doctors, lawyers, or dancers, or whatever you want to be. If you have a passion and you're like, I want to do this thing, this is my calling, I love it, go for it. Like, I'm super, super happy for you. But I'm talking about the people that wake up, they go to a job, they absolutely despise it, they hate their life, it's not bringing them forward in their goals, they're literally working for like five, even seven, but let's say five days a week to have two days off, and pretty much those days are spent sleeping, or partying the night away, or whatever, just to get yourself ready, and mentally preparing to go and slave away again. And that's even on the better scale, some people they- All right, but in an MLM, you may have location freedom, but you certainly don't have time freedom. And you work a lot for little to no money. Majority of people across all multi-level marketing companies never make any profit. 99% of them actually. I'm gonna link the FTC articles down below where you can take a further look. I'm not making these numbers up. It's fact, it, it's proven that the majority of people don't make any profit in MLMs. So yeah, I used to be someone who hated my nine to five. First I worked in retail, I didn't like it. Then I went to the office, an office job. It was fine, but after a while I decided that I wanted to have a remote office job. And then I found a remote office job and then I figured <laughs> I'm not happy still. So what did I do? I started a YouTube channel, found that I really enjoy editing videos, met Julie Air in DC, everyone else in the entire MLM movement. And and things happen and now I'm freelancing video editing. So I am my own boss. I work for myself. I can do whatever I want. My, my day looks like whatever I want it to look like. I have location freedom. I don't have time freedom though, because I still have to edit. I have deadlines for when my clients, my clients, friends want to post their videos, obviously, but I do have location freedom and I am profiting. I'm getting paid for the work that I do, unlike in an MLM. So if you do hate nine to five, there's other stuff that you can do. There has to be some Something that you're good at that you can get better at and surely you can probably maybe make it work you have bigger chances of being successful with anything else just don't do an MLM. MLMs are not a solution if you want out of your nine to five job. Well, they literally work. Like I used to work two weeks in a row and I'd get like three days off and have to go again, open to close. It was, it was ridiculous. And that thought just 
doesn't sit right with you. It could be the fact of trading your time for money. Like I hate having to put a dollar amount on your time because time is so valuable. And imagine working for minimum wage. Like I don't even know what it is anymore. I think it's like $13 an hour, $13. You're slaving away for someone else for $13 an hour. Actually makes me want to throw up. They raised. Oh yeah, that makes you want to throw up, Megan. It doesn't make you want to throw up that the majority of people work for free in MLMs. They don't profit. They don't even make thirteen dollars an hour. She for real. She is so. Oh my god. She pushes my buttons every time. We're gonna take a break from Megan after this video because I can't anymore. Like I just can't. They raised the retirement age, so you're expected to do that till you're like seventy. Where? at all is the time in there for you to actually live your life. Whether it's any of that, or you just don't like the thought of you busting your butt to make somebody else rich and you're not even getting any of the rewards. I don't know about you, but if someone's gonna get mad at me for sitting or going to the bathroom a certain amount of times in the day, I cannot do it. And in MLMs, you are making the top 1% and the founders rich or richer with your hard work. So there's, there's that, Megan. And I'm not saying don't work hard. I'm not because I work very hard, but it's also about working smart and knowing that your efforts are going towards your future and not someone else's. And here's the thing. If you're in a partnership, that's great. But as long as you both are mutually benefiting from it, then that makes way more sense to me, at least. Number four, you are obsessed with growth. You just want to be the best of the best in whatever aspect in life that, you know, matters to you. Side note, I know most people that were athletic, they usually have this type of, you know, bone in their body. You just want to win and you want to be the best version of yourself you can be. Whether that's learning skills like communication or sales or psychology or whatever it is, you have way more interest in that than anything else. And the beautiful part about entrepreneurship is it forces you to grow because you are surrounded by a different type of people. You know you're in the right room when you're either making the least amount of money, you have the least amount of knowledge, the least amount of experience. That's how you know you're in the right room because it forces you to be better. It's this energy that it's just exhilarating. Like it's, it's completely out of this world. The conversations you have are different. You just can't get enough. So whether that's you go to networking events or you start reading more books or you start, you know, listening to podcasts and watching, you know, uh, informational videos on YouTube instead of watching those reality TV shows or, or whatnot, you just can't get enough. And you know that there's always room to grow. There's never a cap. I can seriously not say this enough. Entrepreneurship, um, has molded me into the person I am today, but I know like this isn't even like Megan 2.0 Okay, there's so many other levels to this thing and I talk about it a lot on my page that there is levels to this game and as soon as you think you hit a new top you'll meet like a hundred other new people that have achieved things that you never thought before that were achievable it inspires you to do more and a side note is usually you reach a point where you want to inspire others to do more and it's just it, it, it no longer becomes about money it becomes about legacy so if you want more on that i'll definitely talk more about that on my stories because building a legacy um, that's that that hits that hits different and the last one that I want to go over is not scared to fail now when I say this guys I do not mean that you don't have fear I was terrified when I first got into online uh, you know my online business now this wasn't my first time in entrepreneurship so I already had that experience under my belt and it wasn't as you know terrifying as the first time I've ever tried entrepreneurship but it was a new feeling because first off it's online you're very exposed um, you know people can see you from all over the place and it's normal when you don't have any experience or knowledge on, a, on something to be worried of judgment and to be worried that you're gonna mess up but what separates the good from the great is, are you scared? Yes. Will you do it scared? Yes. I heard this quote and it's absolutely changed my life and it's fear is a mile wide and an inch deep. The first step- That's all very useless when you're talking to people who are joining iGenius or any other MLM because it doesn't matter how hard they work. Are they scared? Are they gonna do it scared anyway? They're just gonna fail. They're not gonna profit because the business model is the issue. It's set up so that the majority of people are gonna fail. So you can't really apply this to an MLM because it doesn't matter how hard you work. First step is always 
always the most scary. And it's true. Anyone's mindset will obviously evolve with the more experience that they get. But let me tell you what, was I scared of failure? Yes. Did I let that stop me from pursuing my dreams? Absolutely not. Over the years, I came to realize that failure was so necessary. What stops a lot of people is they get scared of judgment. They get scared of whatever it is. And they just completely get into the, oh, I'll go when I'm ready or I'll think about it or whatever. They'll, they'll make up any excuse they need to in order to delay actually putting in the action to see any result. But if you listen to that gut feeling that you have that says you're meant for more and that it's not gonna be an easy route, but you're going to do it because there's something amazing waiting for you and your loved ones on the other end, that's how you have drive, that's how you have hunger, and that's how you achieve great things. I used to think that these people that made all this money, they were just like built different. Like they just, you know, had this thing to them that made them unscared of everything and super brave and whatnot. But actually after meeting them, I realized there's only a couple things that are a little bit different from them, but regardless, anyone can actually be successful. It's just the actions that they take. It's not how they show up on the good days, it's how they show up on the bad. And they love failure. Failure is not bad. It just means that you learned something doesn't work, so you're gonna try something else. Failure is a lesson. It's a stepping stone on your way to success. Another quote that really hits for me is, nobody knows how many sleepless nights an overnight success took. Especially on social media, guys, it is very easy for a person to not show their losses, to not show the nights that they cry themselves to sleep, but only show you the good stuff. And unfortunately, as humans, we like to compare. If you put yourself in the right environment with the right people, learn how to absorb knowledge and not take failure so seriously. In the terms of, it doesn't matter how many times you get knocked down. It just matters how many times you get back up. And it's so true. You could fall down. When she says you shouldn't take failure too seriously, I'm curious, what exactly does she mean? Like if you are failing in a way that you're losing money, being in, let's say, iGenius, you're working for free, you're not getting any profit out, should you should not take a step back and be like, okay, I've been trying to work this business. I've been working my butt off for months at this point. Still not getting anywhere. I'm actually losing money. I think that's something to take very seriously and then leave the MLM, hopefully. Not just skip to a different MLM, just leave MLM altogether and start doing something else. Down 10, 100, 1,000 times, but on that 1,001 times, that could be the time that you achieve everything you've ever wanted. And the last thing I will say on that point, because I did say people like to compare, you might see someone that, let's say, hit a massive miles Stone, like made six figures in their business in three months okay and it could have taken you three years not only does everyone have a different story i want to lay it out for you like this most people think that they want the fast success they want you know the, the three months to hit six figures and so on and so forth but the person that took three years to hit six figures, they're gonna have way more knowledge and understanding and have been through more and have more experience. So let's say, heaven forbid, anything were to happen to their business where they needed to rebuild, I would trust the person that took three years to rebuild it way faster than the person who would take three months because they've been through it. Everything that has led you up to even this point of watching this video is setting you up for opportunities to be the person that you are meant to be to fulfill that feeling that you have of you being meant for more. There there are honestly so many other you know common traits and characteristics that i see in entrepreneurs but honestly out of all of them those are the five most common and the ones that really stick out to me this is just supposed to be a short little video for you guys um i did get into a little bit of a rant there but i want you guys to know is entrepreneurship easy no, not by any means, but neither is going to a nine to five and working a job you hate and absolutely struggling with finances, location, freedom, time, freedom. None of that's easy. So you need to pick your heart. Thanks so much for watching, guys. Make sure to like and subscribe. Fair enough. Entrepreneurship is definitely not easy. Freelancing is not easy. Working a nine to five that you hate is not easy. However, MLMs are not the solution. Because you're not an entrepreneur when you join an MLM. Like I said earlier, you're an independent contractor and you're not getting paid for your work. Like you're not profiting. Okay, but let's move on to Eric. Company's struggling a bit. I'm struggling. I was just making just enough money to be broke. We lived in a condo. We're behind on everything. Let's go to Nashville for the summer. We'll work. I'll build a team down there and then we'll come back. Got some stuff going, recruited some people. Mm. I emotionally walked away from Minneapolis yeah. during this because I couldn't focus on my bills. Oh, I didn't sure. even forward the mail, nothing. When we're done, I've ignored everything. I get up there in August and it's about 88 degrees and humid and I get to our condo. What I didn't know is my bank accounts have been closed, the electricity been turned off, for over 30 days. And I never felt like more of a loser, bad provider in my life. 
at that moment opened up that refrigerator and the freezer that was filled with meat rotted stinking dripping maggots i, I gotta clean this thing out holding my breath carrying them dripping across this deck dropping them in and maybe my second trip i said you know what i've had enough i went back to the freezer and i stuck my head all the way in and i went because <laughs> i wanted to remember it this is my day that is enough what is failure enough. smells like I, yes i'm not doing this anymore i'm not doing it again and that moment you know because i've been kind of trying to get lucky in network marketing up until that point and i just decided i'm done i'm done with that i'm going to the next level now and it changed my life having all that humiliation that was a lot that was a short clip but he said a lot like what was he away and he didn't know that in the meantime they they turned off their electricity so the freezer wasn't working so everything went bad or was he living in that condo without electricity and just let everything go bad i'm so confused this clip is supposed to show us how this big network marketing coach the successful figure in network marketing uh used to be broke so your typical rags to riches story. I've never heard Eric share this before. This is actually my first time hearing him say this. So I'd be curious, you guys who know a little bit more about Eric, tell me, have you heard him share this story before? What exactly happened? Do you think it's true or not? Do you think he's exaggerating? Cause like I said, I'm not familiar with it. I don't know if it's true or not, but all right, I guess that's it. That's, we're gonna wrap it up with that one. <laughs> whatever that was. I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, thank you so much for watching, especially if you made it this far. Don't forget to click the like and subscribe button. That's a nice free way to support my channel if you would like. And as always, big, big shout out to my channel members. Thank you guys for being here and I will see you all in the next one. Bye.